In this video, we are going to look at functions and procedures and compare what they, what, how they operate and we're going to look at how you create one using pseudocode and then we'll turn it into some Visual Basic code. So firstly, I've got to say that functions can be used in another part of the program. It's mo it allows your code to be modular, which eventually will reduce the size of your program, make it more efficient. Uh, functions can be used in a completely different program, but only if you've saved it as a module library or as part of a module library. In that instance, it can be imported into a, another program. But the main thing is that the functions always return a single value. Okay, and by that I don't mean a, a decimal, I mean a single variable, a single data type. So it could be Bob, or it could be the, the Boolean value true, or it could be 47, or it could be um, a character, or it could be a, a real number, a number, but it always returns one value to the calling code. So let's compare this with procedures. Well, procedures can also be used in another part of the program. It's just another way of modularizing your code, reducing the overall size of the code in order to make your program more efficient. And yes, like a function, a procedure can be used in another program, but only if it's saved as a module library. The difference between a function and a procedure is that a procedure does not return a value to the column code. But you can change values of multiple variables if you use the command byref or the, the keyword byref when you are dealing with your actual parameters. And you'll see that later on in this video. So this is the program that we're going to create and we are going to, I'm going to show you how you would create step two or you would solve step two using a function in the first instance and then using a procedure in the second instance. And by showing you the same program, implementing a function and then implementing a procedure, hopefully you'll understand the difference between them and how you can construct them. So let's start by declaring our variables, then the main program, and then we're going to create the function called myInitial. So let's start with the stub of the function. So by that I mean the function header and the end function part of the code. So let's quickly explain this. Uh, the stub is basically a function or, or a subroutine or a procedure that doesn't have any code inside it. So this is a stub. Um, and so you have the identifier for the function, you've got the actual parameters of the function, so that's where you declare what this variable is going to contain. It's going to contain a string, and then you're going to give the function's data type, which is the character, because it's returning one character, which is the initial. And at the bottom of the stub, we end it with end function. Okay, so this is what you should always see when you're defining a function to begin with. Now, let's now look at what functions do. Well, they return values. And we're returning a character, so let's declare uh, a local variable in here that can store a character. And then the last thing it does before the function ends is to return that character to the calling code. And so even though there's nothing happening inside this function now, what we've done is we've declared a local variable called output, which is a character. And the very last thing the function does is to return whatever is contained within that variable output to the calling code. So this is the calling code here, where it says my initial is set to the results of get initial my name. And for example, if I entered my name as Ian, I would expect the initial that comes back to be I that's returned and is stored inside my initial. But let's finish off the function um, with some actual code to show it working. And there we go. Nice and easy, isn't it? So what we're doing in this line is we're setting the variable output to be to hold the value of 
uh, the substring of my name starting at position one and going for one character. And so if my name contained Ian, it would take the first letter of my name, which is letter I, and store it in output. And then it would return that to the calling code. So now we've described functions, let's look at how the exact same program looks if we use a procedure. So as you can see, we've got the same initial program or same main program where we've set up the variables, the same two variables. Uh, we've asked the user to enter their name, but instead of assigning the value returned by the function to the variable my initial. This time we're doing it in a different way. We're calling get initial, but we're passing in two parameters this time, not just one. We're passing in my name and we're passing in the variable my initial. And then after we've done that, we have the same output. So your name starts with my initial. So this one, this procedure takes in two parameters, but returns none. So let's start by creating the stub for the procedure. So here we go. So we've got our procedure stub and you can see that it's got the identifier get initial, uh, but this time we've got by eval and by ref involved. And this is because the actual parameters need to be um, described to the procedure so that the procedure knows what it can do with it. So by eval means that you're taking essentially a copy of what's being passed in. Um, this means that you can, you know, make changes to this variable my name inside the procedure, but when it gets to the end of the procedure, that copy of the vi of the variable um, gets destroyed. So any changes you do with byval variables get lost when end procedure is encountered. And because we're just using my name, but we're not changing it, byval is absolutely fine. With the second variable by ref is actually generating a reference to the real variable, my initial, which is, has been created in the main program. And this means that any change you make to my initial inside the procedure also changes my initial in the main program. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, let's finish off the program by adding the same code as we did in the function. And that's it. So we've not had to declare any variables. We've not had to return any data because procedures do not return values to the column code. And also because we've got two variables, one called my name, one called my initial, we can immediately assign the first letter of my name to the variable my initial, and that will automatically change that my initial. So when you encounter end procedure, code re returns to the calling function and the next line is outputting your name starts with my initial and because we've changed it inside this procedure it should stay your name starts with I if you've entered your name as Ian. You have to be careful though that you remember to use by ref when you're dealing with values that you want to change. So how does this code look when we turn it into Visual Basic? Well, it's very similar, actually. Let's um, quickly create this inside the white box. And so here's the main program. So we set up our variables, we uh, get the user's name, and then we call get initial. But there's no call word in Visual Basic. So you can just say get initial, and then you're passing the actual parameter, which is the variable my name. Once you get a result returned to you, then you can write out your name starts with, and then we can catenate my initial, uh, the variable my initial into that string. So we're going to uh, use blue to draw the function. So just as before, with the pseudocode, we have our stub in Visual Basic with our identifier get initial and then the parameter that's been introduced formally here is my name as string and then the function data type is a character so it's as car and remember if we start a function we end a function and 
and now we create our variable, our local variable called output, which is a character, and we make sure that we return that output, okay, before we go into creating the actual code, so that you know that your function has its stub, and it's uh, it's also got its return uh, value, which goes back to the calling function. We've got one more line to go, and it's output equals mid, open brackets, my name, comma, one, comma, one, which takes the first letter of any word or name that's been passed in to the function get initial and it assigns it to the variable output. So let's look at the procedure in Visual Basic. So once again our main program is very similar to the function except that this line here uh, we're calling get initial and we're passing the two parameters my name and the empty my initial into it uh, to be changed and returned so that we can use the actual initial in the next line of code. So I'm going to switch to blue and I'm going to do the stub for the procedure. Okay so our stub here instead of the word procedure we use the word sub and in sub. So there's our identifier get initial and we're using by value, the variable my name, which is a string, and we're using the by reference, the variable my initial, which is a character. And we've got one more line of code to go, which is to take the first character of my name and return it, or store it in the variable called my initial, which stores it in this variable which is the real my initial or the original one and then once our subroutine is finished we go back to the main program and console.writeline can be executed and it will output your name starts with i if your name has been entered as ian and that is it that's the difference between procedures and functions hope the video has been useful let me know if you have any further questions in the comments